Hey friends, welcome back to Olive Branch Homestead. My name is Isabella and I'm so glad to have you here. I am making, uh, I guess power bars is what you'd call them. They're gonna be blueberry, um, frozen blueberry with blueberry jam power bars and I'm really excited to make them. I've never made it before, so let's get started. I'm gonna be using sourdough discard that I have to ferment the dough. Um, so it'll be a two-day process. So yeah, let's get started. First, I have here um, softened butter that I am going to add my discard to. I'm actually going to be transferring to a new jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take most of it and put it in here. And then this will be the new jar that I will put the remainder of the discard that I will be keeping. Feed this flour in a little bit. Off there. Now I'll be adding an egg, brown sugar, and flour to this, and probably a little bit of salt, maybe some maple syrup as well. So if you didn't know, you can actually make brown sugar. So I'm going to put about that much sugar in the bowl, and then this is. Um, really awesome local sorghum molasses and all it is is sugar and molasses and the more molasses the darker the brown sugar now when I do have that's all it is when I do have my KitchenAid again I will be doing large batches at one time I think you can make like something like a gallon and a quart. I guess it depends on the size of your KitchenAid for sure. I And I guess you could technically just add the sugar and then the molasses to your mixture of whatever you're baking. And I do that sometimes if I'm like short on time and I just need kind of the brown sugar addition. Like if I'm making barbecue sauce and I don't have brown sugar instead of taking the time to make brown sugar. I'll just chuck it all in. But I figured I would take this time to show you just how easy brown sugar is to make. And again, if you have a mixer, it makes it so easy to make, like make a batch of it. And it saves money. If you can find good quality molasses, it's really not that much money. Um, like this is $10 locally where I got it from and it's lasted me quite a long time so like several months um, mostly because I don't use a whole lot of it like it you know took like maybe two tablespoons to do this so you really don't need a lot and I mean how often are you using brown sugar right so look at that see nice wet packable brown sugar so I'm gonna add that I'll probably add about that much to this particular dish because I'm going to be adding maple syrup as well. And I will just add, that was probably a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. I like things on the sweeter side of life, so I'm going to add just slightly more than that. So that was probably maybe a third to have a cup of total and now I'll add an egg because this will help to bind everything together all right and I'm probably gonna add around four cups of flour maybe a little more 
system and see what it looks like. salt. Salt brings out flavor, so even in sweet things, we always want to add salt. So I'm going to start with my spatula, I think, and then I'll use my hands. Incorporated, I am going to start in with my hands. I'm going to try to get all this a uh, similar packable consistency. What happened, baby? What's going on? What are you doing? Can I ask what you're doing, Clover? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Nugget? <laughs> you guys are crazy. Alright. This is coming together pretty nicely, actually. And so this is going to act. Oh, they're working, honey. They're working on something. Okay. So this is going to act as the bottom crust and the top crumble. So this is really good. It's it's like largely sticking together like that, but it's also able to be crumbled. So um, I'm really happy with this consistency and I'm going to um, stop mixing now. I don't want to over mix it because I want it to be nice and short, but also, you know, uh, enough of the uh, flour incorporated. Um, and so I'm going to stop here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the fridge overnight. Um, and then I'll probably take it out maybe, you know, an hour or two before I'm planning on using it tomorrow just to soften it back up. Um, and then I will assemble and bake it. So we're gonna ferment this overnight so that the discard can work its magic on the flour. It becomes a little more digestible and nutritious for our bodies. So I'll see you in the morning. Hey friends, welcome back to the next morning. Um, I have a fresh baked loaf here that I'm gonna share with you. Here we go. It is actually a whole wheat loaf, so you can kind of see the darker color to the actual bread. But I, funny story, ran out of regular flour in the middle of making this loaf of bread, so I had to use whole wheat flour. And I used a lot more starter just because I know that there's less gluten, and so I did the same process but with more starter, and it turned out what looks to be very lovely, very flat compared to, not very, a little more flat compared to what I'm used to getting as a result. So yeah, now let's work on the bars. I 
I have been fermenting this dough overnight. Yeah, it's not as good as the uh, okay. pancake. I just stopped. And here we go. Anyway, so I have been so fermenting I, I this dough I overnight. And I'm just going to put pieces in the bottom. I actually did not get a chance to remember to take it out before I love to use it <laughs> so that it is soft again, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It just takes a little more elbow grease to spread this around. technically a doubled recipe um, so you could definitely like not make as much as this but I want to make kind of like a double batch so that I can freeze some and have some in the fridge and then we're gonna put blueberry jam over this oh if I can get it to open dad can you open this Did you drop him? I would do cherry um, because I have a lot of cherry, the kind of pie filling type stuff. But alas, my husband hates cherry. And if I want him to eat it, I can't make it cherry flavored. <laughs> I think you could also maybe theoretically do like a, if you do a double batch, you could do a half and half. So like half of one flavor on this side over here and then half on the other. And that might be really tasty. And then I guess in the middle it would kind of probably be like a blended flavor. So you'd probably have to think about what goes together in that way. But Alright. Just about at the end of this jam here. Spot fill. discard was not to rise anything. We don't want to rise on this. It's not like a cake. But to add 
digestibility and even a little bit of flavor to this. On top of this, I'm gonna add some sprouted granola. And this will add kind of like a crunchy, oaty element to it that I think will be really nice. On top of here, and you can play around. And you can add hemp hearts, pumpkin seeds, whatever you want, really. here and you can even add it to the crust as well all right and I think there's chia in this as well we're just gonna press this in so that it's nice and together you want these bars coming out as together as possible. And this kind of stuff has a tendency to be crumbly, so do that. And we're gonna bake it for about 40 minutes. Okay, now I am going to take the, put it on this, take them, the bars out of the oven and we're gonna let it cool down. You can let it get a little darker than this but this is pretty good and um, you're just gonna let this cool down pretty completely um, and then we can take it out and cut it so I have a couple errands I'm gonna run I'm gonna go pick up a box of strawberries because my local farm has um, a deal today where it's $20 for a whole box of strawberries so very excited about that um, and they uh, are just thriving right now the strawberries even my strawberries are just doing so well so I'm really excited about that they're so delicious already this year usually it takes some time for the sweetness to really start to kick in but it's been we had a really warm kick for a while there this um, late winter so um, and I live in zone 8a I believe it is so um, we're very warm through the winter and that warm kick really helped those strawberries along um, so now we're flushed with strawberries already this year. Um, so that's exciting. We're going to go do that. It's my mom's birthday, hence why the balloon was there. Um, and we're going to go thrifting and have some lunch out with the girls. And maybe if it's not too cold by the time we're done with that, we're going to go to the playground with the girls. And when we get back, the bar should be totally cool and we'll be able to cut into them. So I'll see you then. All right, friends, we are back from all of our errands. I am really excited. I'm gonna cut into this now, so let's see how it went. Are you making her laugh? There we go, well that's a good sign. You hear her laughing? What is she doing? God, I have this because so I get to use my <laughs> whatever Clover is doing is making her laugh with a belly laugh. That is adorable. Oh, you want some? All right. Like this. I really hope 
this turned out good. Never made anything like this before, so. to cut it yeah okay here let me try to cut it up here can you do it here I'm trying to cut this piece <laughs> good job okay whoa there you go like that good job good job baby thank you all right here we go Look at that. Look at that. It's staying together real nice. It's got a big bottom. You want to try it? Mm, do you like it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. It's really good. Do you like it? You want some more? This is really good. I think the crust has that really nice, almost like pie crust flavor. Um, the granola on the top has a little bit of texture to the top of it that's really, really nice. Um, I'm super satisfied with this. I'm gonna put the recipe in the caption below. But yeah, I baked it for 40 minutes. Well, maybe 45, I left it in there. Bless you, mom. And I'm honestly like, super pleased with this. So half of it's gonna go in like a tupper in the fridge and the rest is gonna go labeled in the freezer. And I am really excited to share this recipe with you. I think it is phenomenal. And it's gonna be some quick breakfasts or snacks or anything like that. I can't always make the kind of breakfast I wanna make, like eggs and everything like, right away. So sometimes I just need a really good nutritious thing to start with. So, and then I can get back to the kitchen later to make a better breakfast. But this is gonna be really delicious as a snack for my toddler or what have you throughout the day as well. So, cheers to you guys trying out this recipe and making use of some sourdough discard with some delicious treats. You want your own? I'm coming, baby. Here you go. Here, let's give you half of one. Here you go. All yours. Both hands. No, okay. <laughs> Take care, guys. We'll see you next time. Mm.